Hello there, this is How to Econ. Let's take a look at the example of taxes and market efficiency. Before continuing with this video, I hope you remember what the four step process and market efficiency are. If you forget, please check out the videos about demand, supply, and market efficiency first. I put their links in the description box below. We use the four step process to find new market equilibrium when some events happen on a market, and we use the concept of market efficiency to estimate the impact of those events on consumer and producer welfare. The graph on the screen illustrates the interaction of demand and supply in a market for smartphones. The upward sloping curve is a supply curve with the letter S1 next to it. The downward sloping curve is a demand curve with the letter D next to it. The point where the supply curve S1 and the demand curve D cross each other is point E1. E1 is the market equilibrium point. At this equilibrium, the equilibrium quantity is 100 smartphones and the equilibrium price for a given smartphone is $200. $200 is what consumers have to pay for a given smartphone on average. And it's also what sellers get to put in their pocket. We say that the price for consumers is the same with the price for producers or sellers at the equilibrium. First of all, we will look at the market efficiency at this equilibrium E1. After that, we will see what happens when the government applies a tax of $100 per smartphone on this market. At the beginning of the story, without tax, the equilibrium is E1. Consumer surplus is the area above the equilibrium price $200 and beneath the demand curve section that goes from the quantity 0 to the equilibrium quantity of 100 units. In short, consumer surplus is the red triangle in this picture. To calculate consumer surplus, we will calculate the area of this red triangle. It's very easy. You take the height times the base, then divide it by 2. The height of this red triangle is 400 minus 200 equals 200. The base is the equilibrium quantity, which is 100. Then divide what you get by 2. The answer is consumer surplus equals $10,000. Similarly, you can calculate consumer surplus. It is the area beneath the equilibrium price and above the supply curve section that goes from the quantity 0 to the equilibrium quantity of 100 units. That means producer surplus is the blue triangle in the picture. The height of the blue triangle is 200 minus 0 equals 200. The base is the equilibrium quantity 100 units. Then divide what you get by 2. The answer is producer surplus equals $10,000. Please remember that consumer surplus is not the same with producer surplus. In this simple example, they are equal to each other by accident. In most cases, they are not equal. The total surplus equals consumer surplus plus producer surplus. The notation is TS equals CS plus PS. Since consumer surplus is $10,000 and producer surplus is also $10,000, total surplus will be $20,000. So that was part one. For part two, assume that the government puts a tax on smartphone production. Let's say the tax is $100 per smartphone. What do you think could happen to the market's equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity, and market efficiency? First of all, imagine that you are a smartphone producer or seller who is affected by this new tax. Please remember that in the introductory level classes, two terms producers and sellers are often used interchangeably. For every smartphone, the government wants to collect $100 tax from you no matter what. Sellers would probably increase their price by $100 per smartphone, then put the blame on the government. Well, who doesn't like blaming the evil government? Imagine that a producer who sold a smartphone at the price $50 before, now he would sell it at the price of $150.
the increase in the price of $100 is due to the tax. Another producer on this market who sold a smartphone at the price $100 before, now she would sell it at the price of $200. A third producer who sold a smartphone at the price $300 before, now he would sell it at the price of $400. So every producer or seller would increase their price by $100 per unit at any quantity level to compensate for the tax that they have to pay to the government. That would make the price of all smartphones in this market increase by $100. This increase in the price at every quantity level is demonstrated by the shift upward of the supply curve. It is shown by the green supply curve on the screen. Let's call this supply curve S2. S2 is the new supply curve of this market for smartphones when the government applies a tax of $100 per smartphone. S2 is higher than S1 and the distance between S2 and S1 is $100, which is the magnitude of the tax per unit. The problem is when sellers increase the price, consumers react to that. Because of their limited income, consumers might not be able to afford smartphones at the higher price. Some consumers might think that it's not worth it to have a smartphone anymore, so they will buy less smartphones at the higher price. This is what we know as law of demand. The reaction of sellers and consumers together lead to the new equilibrium E2 on the graph. E2 is the intersection of the new supply curve S2 with the tax and the original demand curve D. At this equilibrium, the new equilibrium price is $250 per smartphone and the new equilibrium quantity is 75 units. Please keep in mind that the new equilibrium price of $250 is the price that consumers have to pay for a smartphone. However, out of this $250, sellers have to extract $100 tax and give it to the government. So what sellers really get after paying tax is only $150 per smartphone. Think about it as your income after tax or your tech home paycheck after tax. So on the graph, the equilibrium quantity is 75 units. At that quantity level, the price of the buyers or PB for short is $250 per smartphone. The combination of the quantity 75 units and the buyer price $250 is presented on the graph by the point E2. At the equilibrium quantity of 75 units, the price that the sellers really receive after paying tax, or PS for short, is only $150. So PS equals PB minus $100. The combination of the quantity 75 units and the seller price $150 is presented on the graph by the point E3. E3 is right beneath E2 at the quantity level 75. The distance between E2 and E3 is exactly $100, which is the tax per smartphone. The distance between E2 and E3 is the same with the distance between PB and PS. Our job now is to calculate the new consumer surplus, producer surplus, government revenue, total surplus, and the debt weight loss. Just like before, consumer surplus is the difference between consumers' willingness to pay and the price that they really have to pay. On the graph, it is represented by the area above the equilibrium price and beneath the demand curve section that goes from quantity zero to the equilibrium quantity. It is the red triangle on the graph. To calculate the new consumer surplus after the tax, we have to calculate this red triangle's area. If you recall the previous graph, the red triangle before was bigger than this one. It signals that consumer surplus has decreased. To calculate the triangle, we have to take the height times base divided by 2. We will get $5,625. That is our new consumer surplus, which is smaller than $10,000 before. It's easy to predict this 
because consumer surplus is a simplified way to represent consumer welfare or happiness. Most consumers are angry when they have to pay higher price for the same smartphones, so they are less happy and consumer surplus decreases. Same goes for producer surplus. It's the difference between sellers' willingness to sell and the price that they can sell it. On the graph, it is represented by the area beneath the seller price PS and above the supply curve section that goes from quantity zero to the equilibrium quantity. It is the blue triangle. To calculate the new producer surplus after tax, we have to calculate the area of this blue triangle. It is $5,625, which is smaller than the old producer surplus before tax. Again, it is easy to predict the decrease in producer surplus because no producers or sellers are happy when they have to pay tax. Since producer surplus reflects producer welfare or happiness, producer surplus would decrease when producers are not happy. How about the government? They are happy because they have some tax revenue that comes from taxing this smartphone market. There are 75 smartphones being sold. For each smartphone, the government collects $100 tax. That means the government will receive $100 times 75 equals $7,500 in tax revenue. It is represented by the yellow rectangular area on the graph. The total surplus represents the total welfare or happiness of the whole society, which includes consumers, producers, and the government. We ignore the role of the government before because they didn't interfere with the market and didn't collect any money from the market. But once the government starts interfering with the market and collect tax revenue, they could be happy and we have to count the government's happiness into our total surplus calculation. So the new total surplus now equals new consumer surplus plus new producer surplus plus the government revenue. It will be 5,625 plus 5,625 plus 7,500 and it equals $18,750. If you recall the old total surplus before tax, it was $20,000. The new total surplus is smaller than the old one. Total surplus has decreased by $1,250. This is the deadweight loss. To get $1,250 deadweight loss, you take the old total surplus, $20,000, minus the new total surplus, $18,750. You will get $1,250. There is another way to calculate the deadweight loss. If you follow the graph, you will see that the decrease in equilibrium quantity from 100 units before tax to 75 units after tax, and the difference in price for consumers and sellers creates the gray triangle. This gray triangle is different from consumer surplus red triangle. It is also different from the producer surplus blue triangle. It is also different from the tax revenue yellow rectangular. The gray triangle doesn't belong to any party of the society. It is wasted or lost. Therefore, it represents the deadweight loss. You can calculate the deadweight loss by comparing total surplus before and after the tax like we did just a few minutes ago. Or you can calculate it directly by calculating the area of the gray triangle. The base of this gray triangle is the tax or the distance between PB and PS. The height of this triangle is 25 which is the change in equilibrium quantity levels from 100 to 75 units. So the area of the gray triangle is 100 times 25 divided by 2. We get the same answer, $1,250. The conclusion is, when there is a tax on a market, the price paid by consumers PB increases, but the price that sellers really receive PS decreases. The difference between these two price levels is the tax per unit. Beside that, the equilibrium quantity decreases. Consumers buy less because of higher price, and consumer surplus decreases. 
producers sell less, gain lower revenue, and producer surplus decreases as well. Government receives revenue from the tax. Total surplus of the society decrease and it creates debt with loss. That means the market is not operating at the most efficient level. Therefore, a government should only tax the market if they have a good reason to do so, such as to fix some negative externalities of a market. This is what often discussed in the lectures about externalities. What we have here is a simple example of the impact of a tax on a market. It is related to the four-step process and market efficiency videos. I put the links in the description box. Let me know how you are surviving in your econ classes. I hope it is not too rough. Thanks for watching and bye for now.